everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We just got done watching uh, SummerSlam 2024 mm-hmm. from Cleveland Brown Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. What an event it was. It was a lot of fun. We are here with our reactions. Check out, if you haven't seen the whole show yet, you want to do our watch along along with it, just check out that video as well. We'd appreciate yeah. that. Um, also, while we're here, just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and head to our website, strangeawesomegames.com, for stuff on WWE and more. Okay. We're going to go match by match here and give it a score and then score the entire thing. Starting with, uh, we open the night with Liv Morgan defending against Rhea Ripley in uh, in a match that featured Dirty Dom at ringside. It turned out Dirty Dom was with Liv Morgan the whole time. And uh, Liv Morgan retains against Rhea Ripley. In the first of uh, what would be more than one surprise for the Judgment Day that night. Steven, to you first, how did you like this match? What did you like about it, and how do you score it out of five? Um, it was a great start with um, Liv kind of running away from Rhea. Rhea's always been this, like, badass <laughs> br- brutality, um, and Liv has not been that, and so it worked really well character-wise. And then Rhea got fake injured, but it really did look like her shoulder was something wrong with it, so... That was cool. Um, it was very good storytelling. Um, even like Dom trying to save Rhea from getting herself DQ'd, like that worked really well. Um, yeah. And then we got the the chair shot, and and that's when or the chair thrown into the ring and oblivion on Rhea, and I mean it was a really fun opening match. I it's a four star match. Like that's what you want. Uh, it's the best match I've ever seen live in. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'd say the same for Rhea, but that's a much higher bar, though. Story wise, a little bit boring. Um, in in ring story, great. Out of ring, so? I mean, okay. I just oh, Dom for just so where they obvious. went. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like Dom was obvious. I mean, I loved the story in the match. Storytelling leading up and like this is the resolution of the last couple months. Has is like where I'm like, ah, that's so cliche and boring. I don't think um, it is the resolution though. And no, I, no, of the storyline for the last three months. Like now we get the turn, and now it's mm-hmm. chap the new chap. It's the sure. next book, um, yeah, or the next chapter, mm-hmm. like new era. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I so I wonder how much of that, Tyler, and not to sound pinky in the air, is like because we read a lot, so we see a lot of cliches. Like I wonder what the average fan thinks. It was like. If, if they were very excited for this, the uh, little people out there, you know, yeah, the I mean, dumb dumbs. Um, I wonder what the dumb dumbs. Wow. The groups. No, but no, I, so Stephen, not. Uh, oh no, go ahead. I'm sorry. But yeah, no, four stars, great kickoff. Okay. That's what I was saying it there. Yeah, Hayden, what were what were you gonna uh, give the match? I'm thinking a four and a half. I'm a little higher than Stephen. Um, I thought the the moment to moment act, like the combat of it all, was great. Obviously, Ripley's whole brand at this point is brutality right and i i think even with that said i think she kind of outdid herself tonight um the the whole shoulder thing was genuinely gross (laughs) that was like almost body horror (laughs) esque right and it was it had us guessing it was genuinely convincing and it it really it really did feel like it was one of those moments where it was we could not really multiple times yes and it was it worked out and it was incredible. I am with you guys. And I think where the story went was a little predictable, but I also think like sometimes that's not a bad thing. Right. I mean, there's a lot of, to go back to your book analysis, like the hero's journey and all of that, like that arc is tried and true, but for a reason it's effective. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying this is up there know, with star Wars or Lord of the Rings, but you know what I'm saying? I, I think that this sets up Rhea to be in a really interesting position where She's already someone I'm really interested in watching. I just love her character and her persona. And I think she represents that kind of goth counterculture really well. But I'm really, really excited to see where they take her character and what her storyline looks like and what Judgment Day looks like, right? And so obviously I I think that the ending itself was a little predictable, but I think it sets up a lot of storylines that could be really exciting in the next couple of years. Oh, I'm very excited for Raw. Same. Yeah, I'll say this. I think the... I thought the I think it's gonna be my first raw that I'll watch. Nice. 
Uh, I thought the match was fantastic. <laughs> I think the storytelling in it was great, starting with like the cat and mouse at the beginning, which, which when you think about it, lays this foundation for Liv always being one step ahead of Rhea, right? And mm -hmm. it kind of tells us a little bit about what's going to happen. And um, the the big spots in the match were great. Um, Liv, whether or not she's injured or not, like we'll find out. But if it's a selling an injury that was really well done, um. Dom like did a good enough job in his moments to, to create that element of surprise. And I think it was, I agree, Steven, this is one of my very favorite, if not my favorite Liv Morgan match that I've seen. Um, Rhea has the ability to elevate talent like that, which she did here. And yeah. so for me, I'm with you in this four and a half stars for me. This was a really great way to start the show. And Steven, at me. first, I'm with you four and a half. Okay. At Hell first, yeah. Steven, I was with you on the, the decision, and I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. Like, it was the easy way out, it felt like. But given what happened later, I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, it's I one of those that. things. It feels better now. Yeah. It does. And I think you have to – it's one of those decisions that I think you have to reserve your judgment until we see the full story, see the full mm -hmm. arc. And I yep. – with the quality of the night we got tonight, I, I fully trust the process at this point. Absolutely. All right, up next, so we all, we're all four and a half stars there. Awesome. Up next, we have um, Braun Breaker challenging Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. And this was a quicker match than we saw last time. Sami got some shots in. Sami had some good moments. And Sami fought like Sami fights, right? Like Sami's mm -hmm. that underdog character who I personally think is a better character when he's chasing the title and he's just a pure underdog than he is as the like title holder. Um, Braun came in looking to avenge his mistakes from the prior pay-per-view at money in the bank and, and take the, the title this time, which he did. He ended up winning in a relatively quick match that had mm -hmm. some good action in it. So, uh, Steven to you first, what did you think? Yeah, it was fine. Um, it wasn't a. It wasn't unpalatable. It went quick. Sometimes those second matches of the night can be bad, and this was quick, and it gets it like in a good way. Um, I think the rating is going to be worse than like the match actually like feels. I think it's a two and a half star wrestling match, uh, and that's fine. It's a like it is a fine match. I, I no complaints for what it is. Um, it's hard to have a five star match in the second match slot. Um, and yeah, so I'm not disappointed in it. It's just a two and a half star match. Yeah, this match felt like there was a job to be done and they went and did it. Like yeah. that was it. Um, hey, how about you? What'd you think? A little higher than you guys. I think I would go maybe three, three and a half. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was average to good. Like you guys said it, I think I did what it needed to do, but I, I think also, I think it's, it's shortness kind of worked in its favor. Right? It didn't overstay yeah. its welcome. And I think that was really the surprise for me in this. And what made it exciting is how quick it was. we we talk a lot about these events that like, we kind of expect every match to be half an hour and main events can get drawn out on both ends. <laughs> of that of that runtime right so i think this one just being quick doing what it needed to do keeping up the pace and momentum but then stepping aside not overstaying that's welcome i think it's three three and a half yeah i'm actually no, I'm, but not great yeah i'm closer to you on this again um i'm i'll go three here i guess i'll split the difference and i i think that this match wasn't the epic that stands out like some of the other matches on this card that said, it was exactly what it needed to be. And I'm, that's where I agree, Hayden. Like this, it's not a bad thing that this match was shorter. Mm -hmm. It, In fact, I think if this had drawn out another five, 10 minutes, it actually would have been to its detriment. Yeah. So I'm three stars here. I'm happy with it. Now I'm interested to see what happens with Braun Breaker going forward. Mm -hmm. More importantly, does Sami Zayn gravitate back towards the Bloodline storyline? Mm -hmm. And do we start hearing that people are or are not oozy enough going forward? <laughs> so that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, third, the match that I know Steven was looking forward to the most, um, Logan Paul defending the United States Championship against L.A. Knight, 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ellie Knight gets it done. Finally, Ellie Knight has stayed like relevant and over with fans for God, what, a year and a half now without ever getting this big moment. And we kept thinking he was going to get it, going to get it, never did. And now he, he has. And I felt like it had to happen tonight. It did. Logan Paul comes in, was great in the ring again. Um, other outside of the ring things notwithstanding that weren't as good from this week. It was a fun match. Steven, what'd you think? It's hard. I can't separate the art from the artist in this case, especially because yeah. it was so fresh. Like, fuck Logan Paul so much. Just, I hate mm -hmm. him as a person. Like, he is a bad person. Um, and it sucks because I've grown to like Ellie Knight in, in the on mic and in the ring kind of recently. Two and a half, three star match. I It was this match I wanted over. I just wanted him off the screen. Like Logan Paul. That's fair. Yeah. Hayden? I'm at more of a three and a half because I think LA Knight is not a character that's really worked for me much. This tonight changed that. And I don't know how much of that is down his actual performance versus how much I just can't fucking stand Logan Paul and have <laughs> very deeply personal stakes against him <laughs> and what he stands for at this point. But that being said, I still think there was some really good fighting to watch here. And like Logan Paul, you have to give him his props. Like on Unfortunately, objectively, he is just really good at playing a villain, and he's really good in the oh, yeah. ring. And he did some really impressive acrobatic stuff that you saw in his fight tonight that I don't think you really saw anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And you know why he's really good at being a villain? Because he's not because he's an asshole in real life. He's <laughs> not acting. He's, not he's a bad guy. <laughs> real. Um, <laughs> that's who he is. So yeah, I'm, I'm at three and a half though. Here, I I feel that La Knight is like. He's fine in the ring, but what makes the character shine is the character, right? The stuff that he does on the mic and everything else mm -hmm. and gets people behind him and the whole call and answer and all that. Like, it's just, he's good at that. He's good yeah. at getting over with a crowd. And it really just almost played this perfect storm this week where it's like, it, if we need any more motivation to want LA Knight to win this match, it was there and he came through. So the match had some good spots in it. We had the fake outs with the brass knuckles and all the nonsense and LA Knight still prevailed three and a half for me. I think it was a, it was a fun time. So, okay. Up next, we have Bailey defending against the queen Nia Jax. And uh, we're always looking out for Tiffy time on the horizon <laughs> as well here. Tiffy with armed with her brand new briefcase given to her by Nia Jax last night on SmackDown. But uh, here we are in this match. Bailey, who's been the champion since WrestleMania, drops the belt here to Nia Jax after suffering two annihilators and back to back mm -hmm. um, at the end. And infinite stink faces. <laughs> yes. Um, just, yeah, lots of just ass related things into the face of her <laughs> upper body, is whatever. But um, I have been. I don't want to say an apologist, but I've, I've felt that Nia Jax has been back this run than last run. Um, and I think that showed a little bit here. I don't know. Steven, what did you think of this match? Where were you at here? It was fine. It's, again, it, the timing, I think, because I'm, unless, I, I feel like I'm gaslighting myself here, but I'm pretty sure this match was after the Logan Paul LA Knight match. Yeah, um, yeah really like it was hard to like I had to like bring myself down a little bit from just the anger the anger <laughs> um I I want to see what Nia is gonna do over the next few months before I like fully trust her and say yeah she's so much better um it was a fine match though like it was a solid three star two and a half three star I'll say three star match um again nothing horrible happening the tiffy time like fake out was fun um i i didn't i didn't hate it yeah <laughs> Fair enough. how about you Hayden? two and a half maybe three i i think it was just kind of dead average right i think like it was fine it was there like i don't think it was very memorable i i i feel like this is already kind of washed over me right and i, I felt that way kind of Right after it ended. This is one of the ones that we 
we talked over and I, I kind of, I, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but the whole Bailey versus Nia just doesn't dynamic storyline mm-hmm. just doesn't really sure. do anything for me, but I think Nia Jax does have potential. So I think, you know, giving her the belt, seeing where things go from here. I, I think hopefully this is probably her worst match for a while. Yeah, I'm at, a, I'm at a three here. It was fine. It was, I, I think part of it for me was that we knew what the result was going to be, you know, and almost certain. Um, this was going to be Nia Jax, you know, ascending and becoming the champion, which is fine. Like, let's see what she can do with it now. I, no. I am of the opinion that Nia Jax needs very, like, specific types of opponents to have good matches with. For sure. Um, whereas I feel like people like Rhea or Charlotte Flair or Becky Lynch or, you know, Bianca Belair can have matches with almost anyone and elevate them. I'm not sure that Nia is there. That's not necessarily a knock on her, right? Not yeah. everybody's at the super elite level, but I think it'll take a little more work to, to protect Nia and have a really good championship run where she can really shine. That said, I'm interested to see if she can do that. And I'm not sure that Bailey's run here really brought out the best in her. Mm-hmm. So this was probably the thing that needed to happen. But what hurt was that we all knew it was going to. So yeah. three stars for me. It was fine. Not Nothing better than that. Okay, now into the big hitters. Let's go. CM Punk in his first televised one-on-one match in WWE in over 10 years against Drew McIntyre in a feud that has been built up just beautifully for the last like, six months. It's been amazing. Here we are. They finally get to go one-on-one with each other. And Drew comes out on top in a match that's not without shenanigans, including by our special guest <laughs> referee. So two ratings here. One, give me your rating on Seth Rollins ring attire. And two and on the stars. match itself. Eight stars out of five? Okay. I'm Seth Rollins, any attire he wears, is I just love it. Um, mm-hmm. I just enjoy it. He's so fun. Uh, the match itself is a solid three. Oh I'm going to say three and a half stars. Um, I could be talked down. I don't think I could be talked up. Okay. Um, it was good. It did a lot to advance and i feel like it was a lot to protect punk um especially because he's been so injury prone in the last three years um Mm -hmm. i feel like he's torn his tricep like six times um it had some fun moments uh we got a few go to sleeps we got some claymores we got seth getting go to sleep um setting up for the future it was a little bit more disappointing than what i kind of expected going in but i don't think i didn't like it. It just maybe was a little underwhelming for where my expectations were. Um, this was my most expected match up until like it was anticipated. Ago. Yeah, yeah. There we go. When um, Judgment Day stuff took over. Sure. Three and a half stars. Okay. Fair. Hayden, what do you think? I'm at a four. I thought this was great. The actual fighting was really fun to watch. All of the set up to it with the storyline those last couple months i think it, it paid off really mm-hmm. well um the 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 guest referee and all the attire there and just his attitude about the whole thing was genuinely hilarious um so fun to watch and the whole thing with the bracelet too is just like added layers of stakes but also comedy yeah. i was i was really into this i had a great time with this match yeah so first of all the ring attire let's go Four stars. I, and that's just because I set expectations in my own head. I wanted a cape, and I didn't get one, so four <laughs> You stars. wanted him to come out looking like fucking Liberace, which was I just did, never going to happen. Which is great, because that's what Drew McIntyre calls him in every, like, thing. He's that's like, hilarious. hey, Liberace, you know, whatever. But, or maybe it's CM Punk. I don't even remember. But uh, the match itself, I'm higher than both of you. This is a four-and-a-half-star match for me. Um, this lived up to the the anticipation for me. They came out of the gates, like, just wanting to beat the living hell out of each other. It sold me on this idea that they hate each other so much, these characters. Oh, yeah. 
and it worked. They did a fantastic job of protecting CM Punk. The fact that he has not been, he's been in like what a handful of singles matches. Yeah. I mean, in the last few years, because he didn't like he wasn't every single week. I mean, he did wrestle a lot weekly in AEW, <laughs> but I don't know. There's a lot of injuries there and protecting him here. He's been off for a while. Like they did a great job doing that while making Seth Rollins being in the match matter. The only thing I thought was a little silly was like the moment where Seth has the bracelet on because he picked it up and punks. I like, love that part. Did you like I thought it was a little silly to take your eye off the ball though. for that moment? Um but, like, but well, I, it worked. I, I feel like it worked. worked because they made it known that they didn't like each other either. It's yeah. not like Seth was on team uh, or Punk was on team Rollins or vice right. versa. No, you know, so. And Rollins, from the moment Punk came back at Survivor Series last year, was pissed. Yeah. Like in the ring. So, yeah, it, it makes sense. It works. It just for me, it seemed a little silly when you like have victory essentially in your grasp and you let it go for that i don't know whatever but um no larry the dog run in which is a disappointment but still four and a half stars for me okay second to last match of the night damien priest defending against the king of the ring gunther in a match that was really violent and physical um and featured at the end a major development in judgment day affairs when finn balor turns on Damian Priest, costing him a victory and ultimately the match. We see that the end of the Judgment Day, I think, is coming tomorrow, or the end of the Judgment Day as we know it. Yeah, it's um, coming this Monday Night Raw. I'm sorry, not tomorrow, Monday. Sorry, my bad. Steven, you keep thinking it's Sunday. I do, I keep, no, I keep, because <laughs> I'm still ingrained that pay-per-views are Sundays, so, you know, whatever. Sorry. Even though it's been like two years. Hard habit to um, break. <laughs> I know. Steven, thoughts on this one? It's a five-star match. It was really good. Um, I loved every second of it, including the the like turn by Finn. Um, I loved the even Damien like reaching out to choke him, um, costing himself the title. Um, I really like so, the two big guys in the ring. Sometimes sucks. Um, mm -hmm. and this didn't, and Damien made me a believer. He is, I thought he was a temporary champion mm -hmm. and he has proved me otherwise. Um, I, I'm excited to see what he does in the future. Like he can wrestle this, this mm -hmm. fight and Gunther's Gunther. I enjoy Gunther in the ring, um, mm -hmm. and on Mike and I, um, it's five star match. It was a very, very well done match. Awesome. Aiden, what'd you think? I thought it was four star. I'm not as invested in the storylines as you guys are, but I still thought it was great. And it made people who ha haven't really worked, haven't really worked for me much, or I haven't really been super attached to in the past. I now am. And I'm with you, Stephen, where I think it is really hard sometimes to have two guys of that size of that caliber do a match. And it's not just a super slow, like, a lot of those matches, it almost feels like watching like a turn-based mm -hmm. strategy game. And this felt a lot more kinetic than that. So I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Awesome. Yeah, this is a five-star match for me too, Stephen. Um, yeah. This is a, like, not only was the actual in-ring action fantastic and really visceral and just like, you know, super physical and violent, this match made me feel, which not all the matches tonight did. Not even half the matches tonight did. Um, yeah. This match did. And you know what? I'm okay admitting I'm wrong about things. I was wrong about Damian Priest. Um, this guy can flat out go. He's good. And he. this was his shining moment tonight. Yeah. Even in a loss. Like, he was absolutely fantastic. Gunther gets praise all the time and he deserves it and he's going to be a great champion that's going to hold the belt for presumably a long time. Damien Pree showed tonight that he belongs in the main event conversation until he basically is done being a full-time wrestler. He is amazing. Um, and Finn Damien is going to be a oh, it's, it's going, it's going to be a, a five-star match too. Yep. Like those two 
should compliment it should be a bloodbath mm -hmm. um that i mean we joked during the show that there's like 17 different hell in a cell matches but <laughs> that could be a hell in a cell match that yeah. would be very very good there's so um, much like hatred setup coming out of this yeah. that there's yeah. so much storyline potential the subtle storytelling cage match i like between those yeah. two. i just i can't I'm, I'm excited for it. The subtle storytelling in this match was amazing. Steven, you mentioned when you reached out, like, grab him around the throat, right? And right, Finn. And first of all, can we can we give kudos and applaud that somebody looked up at the video screen for the replay when they got yes. screwed to see what Thank happened? God. Yeah, that was like, cool. Finally. finally. Damien looks up at it, sees what happened. He's like, no, -uh, you did this to me. And Finn's like the head down and smiling. <laughs> And, you know, and all that is great. So Finn or Damien goes to get revenge. And then, but even when Gunther's got him in the chokehold, Damien's still reaching, reaching for Finn. And yeah. it was so good. I, I loved it. This was a fantastic match. And kudos to both of them. They did a great job. But this was Damien pre shining moment. And yeah. I'm so happy for him. Um, and so excited to see what he can do going forward. Okay. Main event Cody Rhodes defending. The WWE Everything Championship against Solo Sokoa, the fake head of the table, Tribal Chief. And this was a really, like, this match started a little slow. We built a pace up, which we knew I think we needed to do. Because if we started out at, like, a frenetic pace, the run-ins later wouldn't have had the same, like, I think, effect. So we had all the run-ins later because bloodline rules. So of course they're going to happen. We saw all the bloodline run in. We saw KO run in. We saw Randall Keith run in. And then we got the real tribal chief in his return for the first time since WrestleMania 40 Roman Reigns coming back. He's here. He Superman punches solo, spears him, leaves him for Cody. Cody retains. And I assume we will see Roman and Paul Heyman on Friday at SmackDown. I hope so. <laughs> Steven, thoughts on this match? Um, it's a three-star match. It's it, We saw a sign that said Timu, um, like head of the table or tribal. Timu bloodline, yeah. Um, and it, this was the Timu, like WrestleMania match. This was the sequel that, this was the Die Hard 2, where it was like, <laughs> fine, to like good if you see it in a bubble but if you compare it to wrestlemania like you're like what the hell like i mean it's just the same shtick and i'm okay with that um but gunther damien should have been the ending match like it's just because of the roman coming back like that's why and roman coming back was cool and it was good for roman and mm -hmm. i'm the fans cheered him and that's not something roman's gotten a ton of in his career True. um but the match itself, like, I'm not giving bonus points for that. It's it's a three-star match. Like, it was just an average match. And I'm okay with that. I don't it, think it drags down SummerSlam. It's just an average match. Three stars. Okay. Hayden? I'm at more of a three and a half because I thought that um, – I kind of agree with what everything Steven said, except for I do think the ending and the hype of that was worth it. And I think that – I can excuse some of the slowness in the buildup because I think the payoff that we got was actually really great. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm actually a little higher in both. You all go four here. And I, I think that both of them can go in the ring. Obviously, we know Cody can. Uh, Solo showed really well tonight, I think. Um, the, the problem for me is, like, what made WrestleMania 40's main event so impactful was that the match was so personal to everyone involved. Yeah. And this one just wasn't that. So, and they tried by beating they did. The shit they out tried, of but it Randall just Keith isn't. and KO um, over the last few weeks. Yep. But and the moment it became personal is when Roman Reigns returned. Came back. Yeah, that's it. So that's when it became amazing and that's when if you watch our live stream go watch it like all of us are like holy crap you know what's going on here but up until then we weren't really doing that because a i think we all knew nothing was going to really happen until that happened yeah. um but b when that happened it's like so great and the best thing and i think steven you mentioned it was seeing the crowd pop for roman reigns 
and how excited everybody was to see him back. And what a great moment for him. I'm so, I'm happy for him. Um, but yeah, four star match for me. And I can't wait to see where this goes. Because I think this is going to be a story that plays out for at least the rest of this year. Yeah. If not heading into Mania season next year. So, okay. Full show. Steven, where does SummerSlam 2024 sit for you? It is a four star pay per view. Okay. I don't know if I'd give it a four and a half. Um, I'm going to say four star. It was very good. Okay. That's fair. It's not one I'd rewatch. Okay. Hayden, what do you think? Hayden is muted. Hayden is muted. Sorry. <laughs> I give it a four and a half. I think it's one of those ones that, like, I just had a great night. There was a lot of things that there was both. It was one of those things where, like, it, there was both payoff to things that they've been setting up, but also new storylines set up. And I think I left here feeling satisfied with what I saw, but also, like, eager to watch more, which I know is fairly surface level, but, like, that's, that's you know, it's just where I'm at. I think I got... I got exactly what I needed to out of this pay per view, and I actually enjoyed it more than my I had anticipation for it. And I think there are a lot of moments in this that I will want to go back and revisit, even if I don't want to rewatch the whole event. Like I think there's some moments, like everything with Gunther, where he had those cuts and he was bleeding and getting really mm-hmm. into it, like smearing it on himself and flicking it mm-hmm. off his hand, and you know the. The big betrayal with Dirty Dom and Liv at the beginning. Like, I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of moments here that are like almost instantly iconic. Yep. So, it in a lot of WWE events, you'll see a match or two live up to the hype, but it's really rare that an event will live up to the hype. But this one did for me. Mm-hmm. There were that doesn't mean there weren't a couple duds. There were arguably, but the. But I say dud in a really different way. I said dud for some of these last pay-per-views. Because they weren't as bad. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a four and a half for me. I had a really good time with SummerSlam. I think it's fun. Oh, I think yeah. it's hard. You know, you you got a four-hour show with seven matches. And it's hard to have them all hit perfectly. But enough of them did that I can walk away from this saying, yeah, this is a really good time. So mm-hmm. yeah, four and a half for me. And I think we all enjoyed it, though. So that's great. Um, The lowest <laughs> score we gave is four, which is awesome. Um, Which is still saying this is a great show. Yeah, know? it's a great show. So, all right, that's going to do it for our review and wrap up for mm-hmm. SummerSlam 2024. Again, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think in the comments. What were your favorite moments? Mm-hmm. What did you think of Dirty Dom, Judgment Day, Finn Balor, all that stuff, and Roman Reigns returning? Let us know. Uh, and remember, like I said, subscribe to the channel, like this video. It helps us out a ton. Also, head to our website, strangeawesomegames.com, for everything on WWE, video games, entertainment, and more. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye.